Hey there, family. It's JP with Word on the Street with JP. I hope you're making the most out of this year, 2023, because there's no doubt that many of us were challenged in ways we couldn't have imagined in 2022. But my prayer for us all is that we would settle into the fact that we are the chosen people or the chosen generation that the Bible spoke about in 1 Peter, the second chapter, the ninth verse. If we're students of the Bible, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that time is winding up and that soon Jesus will return for the ministry he planted while he was yet here on earth. We are that ministry, that fellowship, and we're known as, yeah, that's right, the church. So there are many who don't believe that time is winding up or that we are at the end of this age, the age that would usher in his arrival. But there are numerous places in the word of God that warns us of when this time would be. Now, it isn't date specific, but for those who know the word of God and who are watching for his arrival, there's no doubt that we're almost home. There's one indication of this in the book of Acts, the second chapter. Other than the wars and the rumors of wars and nations rising against nations, there's one that is very specific and peculiar. It refers to God pouring out his spirit onto all flesh to the point that he, the spirit, will have such an impact on those who believe that they'll begin to dream dreams and have visions in order to warn the rest that it's time to get our houses in order. That's right, to get back right with God. And it reads, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Okay, so I'm no stranger to this. As I browse daily looking for information and data and testimonies of the saints. And it's now inundated with videos of rapture dream visions and prophecies. And I'm a natural skeptic, so I kind of take it with a grain of salt, you know, until lately. In one of my episodes I did, I told a dream that I had over 30 years ago. It was about the rapture of the church. And I remember that dream so vividly is because it's the only one that I can remember because I don't generally dream. So I said that to say up until now, I've had very little dreams and the ones that I have had, I can't seem to remember them. But on a night last week, that's right, I had not one but two dreams. My mind is, is swimming and reeling. My heart is swollen with excitement because of the revelation that God, sure enough, is pouring out his spirit on us all, at least those who believe, just like his word foretold. It's almost time to go home, y'all. And until then, let me tell you about my dream. I'm so honored that I could be a part of the fulfillment of that prophecy because I'm beginning to have dreams. They're becoming more and more frequent. I know I'm having them, but I failed to write them down. So they're hard to remember. If you don't write it down, you ain't going to remember it. So, and I, I, you know, for the last month or two, I've been having these little mini dreams. And well, I dreamed that I had a little dream last night, but I can't remember it because I wasn't writing stuff down, but not this time. Because as soon as I woke up, I found my journal and a pen and I wrote as much down as I could recall. And here they are. So I had two dreams back to back on the night of December the 28th, 22, or the morning of December the 29th, 22. I don't know if it was morning or night. I went, no, I went to bed a little early that night. And the first one was me and a few other folks or comrades. It seemed like we were in a war type situation and we were in a war zone. We were held up in a small house in a community. And there are about six or seven of us. We were on the lookout for the enemy, and it seemed like we were cut off and trying to lay low. It was quiet, but we would see some surface-to-air action every here and there. Every once in a while, we see a missile or a grenade or some sort of explosive go off near us, but none targeted us. We were sure that if we were to be found or discovered, that would change, you know, and we weren't in uniform, but we were armed. 
we had a female commanding officer and she was securely protected. And so one night I was stationed on the front porch doing night guard duty. It seemed that I was way too comfortable to be standing guard because I've been in the military before and I know that the guy that's guarding everybody, he's the one that is hyped up on coffee and, and, and power drinks and he is trying to stay awake and he's trying to be alert. And I was so comfortable that I obviously felt that the threat of danger was low. So I found myself falling asleep in the chair that was on the porch. So after a while, I woke up and came into the house, realized that I didn't even have my weapon with me, but finally I found it after a few minutes of searching stuffed between two cushions on the couch. Now that's not taking good care, is it? I was concerned that I had let my weapon get away from me, but it didn't seem like I was alarmed. I found that strange as one of the most important things for a soldier in the field to do is to always keep their weapon on them or slung. And when that's not possible, it should never get further than arm's reach. So morning came and there was a knock at the door. I answered it cautiously. It was the enemy. <laughs> you know, like, okay, what are y'all doing here, yo? And so they laid into me right away. They claimed to know me from this podcast as a teacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I could tell that they really didn't. They asked to speak with our commander as their commander, who was also a female, made her way to the front of our tiny little hideaway house. She refused to come in, but insisted on confronting our leader in the doorway. The two stood there looking at one another as one of the enemy soldiers asked to come into the house. With great caution, we did. We let him in, and he came in and looked around for a while. Then we lost sight of him. The two commanders talked for a while, then began to whisper where the rest of us could no longer hear their conversation. That was kind of strange. And so after only a few minutes, the enemy commander gave her salutations and began to leave. As they were leaving, the two commanders began to semi-agree on some things, but not really. They left and all was quiet. And then I woke up. That was a strange dream. But, you know, I was, I, I, you know, I've had a few days to think about that dream and we're in a battle. We are soldiers in the kingdom of heaven. This, this world is not our home. We are ambassadors from the kingdom of heaven, of the kingdom of heaven. We are ambassadors. And so we're on enemy territory, slack, then lost our weapon, our word, our Bible, not taking care of the, of the thing of the gift that God gave us in order to defeat the enemy. So unconcerned that we don't even have it with us. So unconcerned about things that are going on that standing guard and being watchers isn't important enough to where we fall asleep, sleepwalking in this life when we represent the kingdom of heaven. Let the enemy in, <laughs> and then we compromised with them to the point that we lost one in our midst. Let that joker in the house and lost track of him. And then I woke up. That's what I, that's what I got out of this dream. I don't know what the interpretation is. That's just what my, my heart tells me. But if you all have an interpretation of this dream, feel free to contact me and you can Message me right there on Rain Radio ATL. Please leave a comment. Listen to this thing a couple times and tell me what you think. And that was just the first dream. The second dream was stranger than that. It was so confusing. In this dream, I was milling around on the side of my house and I had a long barrel with me, but found it to be okay to prop it up on the porch, leaning on the side security door. <laughs> Again, then lost track, put down a weapon. And I was looking for my Chihuahua Bannock, that's the name, Bannock, Special Agent in Charge, Jay Worthington Bannock. 
he's about that big and um and about that scary but i i saw i i caught a glimpse of him as he jetted into the backyard as i reached the fence leading into my backyard i saw him running up to a lady who was climbing over my back gate <laughs> you know bannock was going berserk as she was accompanied by two huge black bull mastiffs. So she had these two big old dogs, and she's coming over my gate. Bannock is that big. Bannock can't protect me, and I left my gun over on the side of the house. Lord have mercy, what's wrong with me? So they didn't seem to have ill intentions. However, her two dogs were quite intimidating. I was kind of like, okay now, <laughs> you know, don't get too close. And, it, I, and I didn't seem to be overly excited about what was happening which was strange. Then suddenly, all the animals began to get agitated, not to the point of attacking anybody or, or each other. And then from the backside of the fence entrance came the largest mountain lion I had ever seen. This sucker was huge. It approached, but it didn't attack or even seem defensive. The dogs were a bit animated. They didn't seem to be in attack mode either. The lady was not afraid, but I was, <laughs> you know. I backed slowly down the side of my house trying to make it to the front of the house so I could run to the front door and get in. But I realized that I had backed past my long barrel and it was now out of reach. I wasn't sure if I could make it into the front door without it. But then I woke up. So yeah, if y'all have any interpretations about those dreams, feel free to um, contact me on Rain Radio ATL. That's R-E-I-G-N Radio ATL. Look for Word on the Street with JP, which is the only show on Rain Radio ATL. And then tell me what you think. I have no idea what that last dream means, but one thing did stick out, just like it stuck out in the first dream, is that I left my weapon unattended and who can defend themselves without a weapon if i were to have to surmise what that meant it would mean to me that i need to get more into the word because it seems like maybe the warfare is kind of slack right now but it will intensify and that's what i got out of it Tell me what you got out of it. So thank you so much for listening and watching Word on the Street with JP. I'm your host, JP, man. If y'all don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to or you simply want to rededicate your life, do it today. And I'd be glad to lead you in a prayer right now. And so let's just do that. Lord, we just thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you, Lord God, that we can see prophecy manifesting itself in this time as we are the chosen generation all those who believe and all those who will believe and for those who want to dedicate their life to you or rededicate their life to you we ask you to come into our lives we trust you we recognize you as the one and only true and living god who sent your only begotten son to the earth to live a sinless life but where the sin of all mankind and to pay the price as the perfect sacrifice for the eradication of our sins. We asked you to come into our hearts, Lord God, that you would be our God and that we would be your children. And we ask you to forgive us of those sins that we might spend eternity with you. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. So if you said that simple prayer, I believe that you are one of the newest members of the family of faith. So. Welcome to the family. My first recommendation for you would be to connect yourself with those folks that keep on trying to bring you to the Lord. <laughs> you know, <laughs> connect with them. Connect with them and fellowship with them. Find yourself a Bible-based ministry where they rightly divide the Word of God. Start learning the things of God, learning the heart of God that you might be able to serve Him through the service of people. And so, yeah, man. Thank you so much for listening today. I thought that was um, really an amazing experience and I'm honored that I would have a dream that I remembered, you know. And so, um, yeah. 
make sure that you take care of yourselves take care of one another and until next time that's right we'll see you on the radio <laughs>